allowed. Okay, so. All right. All right. Hey, Pat. Okay. Let's start it, so be polite to everybody. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to call up that place. Maybe I go to participants. Yes. Oh, look, oh, look at this. Here's, let me try this. More. Uh -oh. Where'd my Zoom go? Oh, there you are. Wait, where'd my baseball go? Damn it. <laughs> Invite. Uh, yeah, we got a quorum. Yep. All right. Well, we can't so deal with that. So, yeah. I mean, as long as it's recorded here, that gets sent right. to the web anyway after. So it wouldn't be a big deal. It just won't be done by town hall streams. That's right. the only yeah. difference. Yeah. And, and as I can't. It's being recorded. It's fine. I joined the meeting from the link that is posted on the town's website. So that if people want yeah, anybody, to attend, anybody who wants to be there, yeah. it's going to be here. Yeah. So, so but it, it certainly is recording because I just got the message. It said it was. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's uh, 632 by my phone. So uh, let's call the meeting to order. Um, this is the regular planning board meeting of Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. And uh, Joe and I were just bemoaning how it got to be three weeks into October already, but there we are. <laughs> so um, uh, I don't think we have the minutes of uh, October 6th. I, I didn't get them. Are they out there? No, I don't think. Okay, so that, that, I don't think they were we have no minutes to, to, uh, to uh, uh, redo, uh, review tonight. So we'll do that next time. Um, I had a chat from uh, Marianne Minard, who's here by audio, and she said that she would like uh, something to talk about under the public audience thing. Uh, so I'll invite anyone to have uh, make a statement if there are a question regarding any item that's not on the agenda. So Marianne, do you have something? I do. Thank you so much for taking me from my car to make <laughs> a comment. And I'm hoping you'll bear with me for a moment because I want to ask some questions of you. Um, I was away for an extended period of time and I will admit it was a bit slow in doing catch up when I returned. Uh, hey, man, man, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I had a, uh, just for a protocol here, uh, uh, give your name oh, and your address, please. Sure, I'm sorry, Marianne Minard, uh, Beach Road in South Berwick. And uh, so anyways, uh, in trying to um, delve into the referendum questions, I first contacted Mark Lawrence today. And I called him because I wanted to get insights into the right for food amendment. And I've been trying to research and it's challenging to find accurate, unbiased and nonpartisan information. So my discussion with him was very valuable. Um, we spoke of uh, unintended consequences and the fact that this um, this amendment, if passed, could could possibly invalidate local regulations because it's a constitutional amendment. My big question was, selfishly, I guess, if this amendment passes, could my next door neighbor in Agamenicus Estates put ten pigs in their backyard? I'm sorry. What what amendment are you talking about, Marianne? This is the referendum amendment, the right to food amendment. That's coming up in November, okay. Right, okay. So Mark's response was that those types of decisions would have to be determined by the courts. And we know about the complete the complexity and timeline for legal challenges. Um, so I, I'm seeking, in seeking ways to try to find out how to best communicate this, um, I learned that the Maine Municipal Association has um, created guidance and is encouraging communities to put the word out. And there's a memorandum that I um, forwarded to you um, through the chat um, to put out um, a notice of that community members should be encouraged to vote no. And that comes from MMA. Um, 
And I also know that in times before, say, for example, the casino issue in town, um, there was a town proclamation. I'm coming to you first because I felt like particularly around zoning, um, this, this particular uh, constitutional amendment could definitely have a huge impact on our zoning regulations. So I thought I would begin with this esteemed group, um, ask you to consider it, certainly not at this moment, but of course, um, time is short here uh, before our election and perhaps communicate with our town council um, about the, the, um, the direction that the council and the planning board would want to take, be it aligned with the main municipal's suggestion or not. So I guess there's no answers to that right now, but I just wanted to request some clarity and perhaps a response from planning board and or town council. So Marianne, uh, we meet the first Wednesday of uh, would be November, which is the third, which is after the election. Yes. Um, so what would you ask us to consider that we could? Well, I would ask you perhaps, um, you know, after this meeting or perhaps during a recess in this meeting that you look at the link I sent and read the recommendation from the main municipal association and then perhaps communicate with the town council about the possibility of following their recommendation on the message to voters in the community. Okay. All right. Uh, we probably... Okay. Sure, I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, it's a big one. And I think I think you'll be very, um, well, I, I think if it passes, that it certainly is gonna have a huge yeah. impact on zoning. Yeah, yeah. Got, good. Uh, as a matter of procedure, we, we, we can't take that up. We can take this input now, but we can't take it up as an agenda item tonight because it wasn't posted, but people yep. can, can look at it. Uh, every, do, do, does everybody have, there's a chat that uh, she, Marianne included a, a link to uh, um, everybody, if they have the ability to pull it up and they're interested, they can do that. Has everybody got that, that they can do that? It says chat to everyone. Can you check, check your chat listing and see if you got that? Yep, I, Mine, I got it. Okay. Mine's empty. But I, 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 it was a chat sent through the meeting. Yeah, but it was before you joined. Uh, so what okay. I'll do, I'll yeah. do is um, I'll say here it is. And sure. if, if you access it, if it doesn't bring up the memo and the um, suggested language, it, it could be on page two. Uh, you have to kind of arrow across to that link uh -huh. if it doesn't go directly Ooh. there. Okay, so everybody who's online now, just I, I just sent the link through the chat, so it's all there, available for you to take a look at and. You can consider uh, actions then. Okay, thank you, Marianne. Well, thank you, and uh, have a good meeting. Take care. Okay. Yeah, Pat, did <laughs> I see? You? Did you have your hand up, Pat? Yeah. Uh, unmute yourself, and then we'll hear your question. I know where you live, but tell okay. us where you live. Yes, I live on Brattle Street, Pat Robinson, uh, and chair of the Conservation Commission. I am requesting that you invite the Conservation Commission on a site walk on this next develop, the development that is on the agenda tonight. I don't know, you know, I mean, we'll see what they say tonight. I don't know if it's going anywhere, but okay, if you right. do- well, that, that, that's, on, that's on a matter for tonight. We're, 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 it will get there where it'll be premature to schedule a site walk today, but no, we, we but, Okay, it. yeah, that that's fine. But I, I do want you, I, I, I would appreciate you inviting the Conservation Commission to attend that site walk. Any, anyone can come to the site walk and it would be public, public notice, but understand your request. Yeah. Right, right. But I, I really feel like that we should get an invitation. So, you know, be, okay. because the Conservation Commission needs to have a say. I mean, we don't want another Bat Lot Road okay. problem. I think that we, we should be in there early on. Okay, I, 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 can, I can send a link or I can send a notice to Pat directly if Pat wants to send me her email address. I'll take sure. care of that. If and when we ever get there, I'll take care of that. Yeah, that well, yeah. well, we're getting, we're getting premature. We're going to talk about this pro right. project in a minute. And yeah. we'll, we'll deal with some of the Yeah, I understand it's premature because it looks like it's just like a, you know, a quick, like, this is what we're thinking about this, but yeah. There's no application been made yet, so. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I that's what it looked like, but I just want to. Yeah. 
Okay, oh, well noted, duly, duly noted, Pat, good. Uh, uh, and, and for any subdivision that comes in, yeah, I'd appreciate good. it. Thank okay. you. Do it. And that actually relates to some of the other stuff we're gonna talk about tonight. So that's do, well, well noted, so, okay, good. All right, uh, good. Uh, I forgot to take the roll. Let's take the roll. Uh, uh, I think we got, uh, so um, uh, Hershey Hirschkoff, raise your hand. Here. Jeff here. Hand, here. here. Betsy Randall. Here. And myself, uh, Matt, uh, Manley is not here. He may be at town hall and we apologize that the connection not made, but we got four out of five, so that's a quorum. So, okay, good. All right. Um, great. Um, under correspondence, uh, there's a, one correspondence that came late today from David to the applicants for the um, Metal Pond estate uh, thing which basically said uh, you're past the time frame, you've been inactive and we gave you a month and, and, you, and you're not there. So that correspondence is part of the record and that application is a uh, um, uh, moot. I can't think of the right adverb. With, withdrawn. Withdrawn, okay, yeah, so, uh, that, so that's noted. Do, okay, do then, we have um, any, I'm sorry, can I just ask, David, do you have any other information about why they withdrew or decided not to move forward? They did not withdraw. They had been planning on submitting something and we've been waiting for months. I don't have all the dates right in front of me. I can find them quite easily. But bottom line is uh, it's been languishing for quite some time. Uh, we went through some of the cases that have been doing so. We looked at it. The board decided that they would give the applicant 30 days to produce something uh, okay. to give us an idea. They did not. So we withdrew it. They can they, still propose it, but they have to come back and start yeah. from scratch. Uh, and, and there, there, there are time frames that they've passed mm -hmm. in, in the ordinance, and we. No, no, we, no. I, I, I hear you. Okay. I thought maybe no, there was more of a story about why, but uh, okay. no public story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever's going on is their business. So yeah. Okay. Um, I would, uh, if with people's concurrence, I see Eric Weinrieb is here, um, virtually. We could skip over to uh, the, uh, I got the wrong one up here. Hang on a second. Actually, if I could. Sure, uh, Eric. Eric Sari was supposed to be presenting and he went to town hall and no one was around. And he called me and I came back to the office. I am not completely up to speed on this. And he is due back here after turning around um, in about 10 minutes. Okay, so then we'll, we'll do some other stuff then, okay, Eric? That would be perfectly fine with me because I would embarrass myself because I do not know <laughs> all the details of this. And he's, he called me in a panic. But, so okay. can I just ask a question? It does say on the agenda that it says in-person and Zoom. But when he showed up, no one was around. Yeah, there was a, a, a twisted uh, circuits tonight and the person who's supposed to be there at town hall is not there. So I apologize for that. Okay, there, so- There is a Zoom meeting right now and it is being recorded, but we don't have the live feed from the council chamber. Well, no, and-, and, and, and If, if Manley's even there, I don't know. And, and, the, and the invitation was for people to show up there, of course, and uh, we yeah. apologize for that confusion, Eric. So- okay, that, That's okay. Just as long as we're, we're fine with that. It's just as long as we understand how we got there. Okay, yeah, thank, thank I will thank go on mute and he'll be along very shortly. Okay, we'll do other things and hopefully, well, we'll certainly wait for him to get there and I apologize for his running up and down 236. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay, good. We'll come back to you then. Okay, then um, let's go to, uh, have I got the right? Yes, hang on a second. Let's go to item two, which is uh, the, David left our last meeting and um, prepared uh, two things essentially. One was the cleanup, a proposed cleanup to the uh, ZBA requirement for variances for road standards under the uh, subdivision regulations. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that. He'll present what he has on that. And the second thing is we had started, we had considered two uh, ordinances, one in the subdivision 121 and one in the zoning uh, site plan for 140 regarding clarification of the notification to the public 
at the sketch plan level to participate and ask questions of the applicant and the applicant to make notices. So I'll hand it over to David Galbraith and uh, you can take it in any order you want, David. Okay, well, why don't, uh, why don't you guys let me know which one you wanna hit first and- uh, uh, let's, do, let's do the notice ones first. Okay, so how about, should we go to the, hold on, notification. How about street design? I mean, excuse me, site plan review. Okay, sure, let's do that one first, 140. Okay, and you should have had, uh, you should have that, and I'm just opening it up right now. Sorry, I didn't know which one we were gonna hit first. And yeah. I've it... already got like 10 things open, so. <laughs> uh, are you are you enabled to share that? I sure can, give me two secs. Make sure you got the rights to do that. There we go. I, I, could, I could pull it up as well, if you have trouble sharing it. See. Okay, and I just got to move that back. Yeah. So we had some screen juggling. All right, let me see. It's still opening as soon as we can. It looks like I can share it. So, come on. There we go. Okay, let's try and share this. Oh, uh, cheaper. All right. I have, to, I have to give you rights. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Can you see that? Um, make it sure says you're sharing. We haven't got the image yet. Okay. It says I'm sharing. There it is. Good. We're all okay. set. Okay. And that's okay. So that's the first one and subdivision review. Sorry. There we are. Okay. Now, let's see. I want to make sure. Okay. Do you see the red lines? Yes. Can you see the. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, so um, this is uh, the first document we're looking is is the working draft uh, should be dated 10 20 20 21. And it's the ordinance we're looking at the subdivision of land, uh, which is 121 dash four. And what we really focused on uh, was looking at some amendments we went over this last meeting. And one of the things that was kind of missing was the sketch plan the original draft um language said the city uh the excuse me the town has to send notification upon receipt of a sketch plan notice we have been asking applicants to do that but they um but the the actual ordinance language says that the town's supposed to do that we discussed it at the last meeting so i proposed a couple of things in here um, to add, the other thing is it was very vague on what information be share, should you be shared by who. So it's who's responsible and what needs to be shared. So what I did is I went through and I added all this item in red. So there's a fair amount of red, but it's just in one area, okay? So the first thing is um, I wrote some language saying, here's what you need to do. Um, and I can read through them if you'd like or read along. Um, a sketch plan discussion with the planning board will be scheduled according to a submission schedule set by the town. As you know, we have these schedules. When something comes in, Amy takes a look at it. She shares it with Joe. They determine when it should be on the agenda. What we're proposing is that the applicant takes that responsibility of that notice on, but we will need to tell her the date. Pretty simple stuff. So um, rather than we also talked about when who should be notified. So I carried the abutter language. I just put it through as uh, an abutting property owner. That's in this section here. Is that highlighting for you? Yes. 140. Okay, 140. I basically referred back to the definition section only because if we change the de definition section, it will automatically get updated. So that's a little bit of housekeeping on that one. Item number two um, outlines you need to have it uh, the notification in writing, and it needs it to include an overview of the application, just basically what you're trying to do. 18 lots, for example, using today's um, example, uh, and single family subdivision, this amount of acreage, blah, blah, blah. It needs to also include the sketch plan meeting date and time, which is the town will notify them of what that date will be. So meeting time, location, and the contact information for both applicant and town staff. You said uh, you got city staff there. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Good catch. All right. I'm going to, uh, this should be my track changes. So let's see. 
Yeah. Nope. Right. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Now put that in bold. We're going to need six. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So. Me too, sir. Okay. So. Good catch. Hey, hey, David. I have one quick question, if I may. Uh -huh. Please. Um, uh, a butters, uh, I assume, just refers to people who are adjacent or contiguous to the property, right? And across the street or across water bodies. Okay. Is it is is there ever? I I was the impression. I remember having notified a butters myself that it sometimes it was like within a certain number of feet or you know, especially it if it were. It is. It is. Okay. It's by two hundred and fifty feet. But again, if that if that definition ever changes, yeah. It'll automatically update to this. So if we suddenly okay. decide, let's notify everyone within five, we're covered. Okay, and that's the that's the definition it refers back to in parentheses. Okay, gotcha. exactly. And I've and I've got that in a separate document if we want to look at that before we nope, wrap it up. No, that's that's fine. I I believe you. Okay, okay. I should have I should have also given you fair warning. I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone on this. So the other language that we're going to be looking at probably the next item, which would be what are we looking at now? Subdivision will be um, site plan. So the notification we wanted to carry that over. So almost all this language is mirrored. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the, the last thing is we talked about putting a, a deadline on when that notification needs to be received. We decided, or we part of discussion, we said I put in seven days here. I thought that was the general. So they have to receive that notification within seven days of the hearing. Well, or, so excuse me, with a meeting, it has to be sent within it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sent. Yes, yeah, sent within a minimum. So, um, and then I did not. Uh, so this is all language that we had. Uh, this is language that I copied from the other document. And okay, so let me, let me ask a question, David. So that all uh -huh. that makes total sense. That big fat paragraph you just went by, that right. did, that 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 was not part of the subdivision uh, scratch pan thing. But now you brought in from the uh, from the uh, site plan review. Uh, it most of it is was missing from both the site plan. And the uh, excuse me, both the sketch plan review issues, uh, and the site plan review. So subdivision and sketch plan. What I did is I looked at the language of both, and I basically uh, wrote this section from. I should have started with the other one probably, but that's fine. Anyway. Right. Um, but what I did is I I wanted them to read the same. So you're talking about so the same notification, same requirements as far as whether they're doing a site plan for a new McDonald's right, or they're right. doing a subdivision. But, but the, that, that big fat paragraph that starts, the applicant shall be prepared to provide the board with blah, blah, blah. Correct. After, after that, uh, that, that's that's new. But it's a, it's a compilation <laughs> of the, the two. Exactly. Got it. And, and, and additional language that I put in there because we talked about they have to notify them of the meeting. But in the, for example, it didn't say you have to notify them of the time, location, and date. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's it's common sense stuff, but you know, if we okay. don't spell it out. Okay. Uh, the the other issue that I went down, if we could go down to drop down D here, is the old language uh, said that the planning board may require a public hearing. So no, what I did, I took that out and I said the planning board shall. Uh, uh, public meeting shall be held, um, and blah blah blah. As and then I just referred back to the prior section. Yep. And other than that, that's that's really okay. it. Um, uh, uh, David, uh, we talked. We have we determined yet whether this is something we can do administratively, or would have to go to town council as an ordinance change. We don't know. One, that one uh, well, originally when I first looked at the language, we were going to just change sort of the shall to may, you know, I, excuse me, uh, yeah, because it originally, the planning board may have, a, so we thought if we're saying making the requirement just slightly different, we're not changing the overall uh, triggers of what happens when. I've added enough language that I was gonna ask the town attorney, but I think I've added enough language that I'd just rather take it to the, to the yeah. town council as a housekeeping item and really say, we did that. The uh, so that's really it. It, it. I thought it was fairly easy, but I figured you guys may want to wordsmith some of this. So, uh, question: um, This is all, this is the butters. That's that's that that's what was there before. 
mm-hmm. um, uh, with the input from the Conservation Commission earlier this evening, uh, would we want to also have them notify other town boards? We can have uh, at the sketch plan level, we can require notification of any thing that you want. If, it, if, if it's a requirement of the ordinance, they need to do it. Um, yeah. So we can certainly require, uh, we could put in there, you know, other boards as determined by the city staff or um, mostly I think the Conservation Commission for the most part is going to be interested in some divisions. Yeah, um, but, you know, I'm guessing, be- but but there may be some projects or abutting sensitive areas or whatever that the Conservation Commission may want to go, hey, geez, you don't want to put that Walmart there, not that we have one coming because there's 30 acres yeah. of wetland. Right. But so. also, I mean, uh, there might be uh, uh, something that the historic uh, uh, board would want to be. So we, right. we, we, we add, who, who would determine that list? Or I suppose it could be part of the notification that they always have to notify. Right. If I, you can, you can, I, if you want to notify them, I would say you notify them in writing, just like you would in a budding property owner. And it would likely be, like I said, the historic commission. That's going to be very project specific. So we yeah, usually do that, that anyway. But with, with anything else, we could certainly say the conservation uh, district. The other thing that I wouldn't mind putting in there is, uh, is for example, the school district. Um, right. If if we, uh, I mean, I don't know if they need to be involved with bus stops, but that could happen after if and when. Yeah, a, that, a that sub- can happen. Yeah, it's not really part of the site plan review process, but notification. But certainly, well, I, the think, conservation I think conservation. Uh, is the butters, and then other town other, other town boards. Um, you know, they wouldn't do the library board. They wouldn't do this. No. That, but we, we should identify which other town boards, including the conservation commission, should be part of the notification. Okay. Uh, uh, ordinance. Uh, I'm just trying to figure where we're going to drop it in. Yeah. Um, can I just yeah, add it? If, I, it's in the, if it's in the historic district, can we make sure the historic, I assume they have to get notified anyway, right? Sooner or later. Yeah. This, this, this brings a minute sketch. Yeah. So I would say if it's within our historic zone or the purview of the historic commission than them. Uh, Conservation Commission, obviously. Are there any other, there's no other standing boards that would have uh, take a potential interest, is there? Uh, Let's see. Uh, Hold on. I don't know if I'm, am I still screen sharing? Yep. Ah, okay, let me go back to that then. <laughs> I'm like, um, I could I could do a once over of the boards, but certainly yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. And, and just make, and it's, it's gotta be, you know, land use or not land use, but boards that I, have jurisdiction or could have jurisdiction depending on the circumstances. We, I, we're, we're not doing a, uh, I mean, the rec board and stuff like that but it's really so spe- you know, know no i would just say the conservation commission and if I, i'll look through the list of of other yeah. town boards I think, i'll I think see if any the historic district commission and the uh, conservation commission and if there's others we can think about that but uh i, I, would, I would for sure do those too okay thank you okay and w- and with okay so let me do this real quick so I just want to save this one. Okay. All right, I've got that one. Get that out of here. There you go. I'm going to giving you back your screen real quick. Should we go to the next one? Is site plan? Yes. Okay. So let's see. So site plan here. Yeah.
Okay, now, oh, there you guys are. All right, sorry. I've got to move people on screens here. So I've got to change you from one screen to the other. I can't see you and you can't see me. There we go. Okay. Let's try this one. Are you able to see that now? There you go. Cool. Okay. So this is the site plan approval. Again, working draft, same kind of things I did. So this is where I originally started. Um, so I should have, I apologize. I really should have thought about it and used this. So what I did is I went by in the site plan procedures and I was reading all of the things that we already talked about the site plan procedures. Almost everything from it is applicable to subdivision and, and, and site plan a subdivision or so. So this language had a little bit more detail. So what I started out with is just the items that we listed in red. And this is what I used for the one that we just went over. Okay. Yeah. So um, this basically says the exact same thing, except last time it was all in red because I'd cut and paste, yep. uh, pasted it um, from one document to the other. But it, it's really the same things I'd need to cut and uh, just make the same kind of modifications to that. And the only other thing in this one is, uh, oh, it's the other one. Okay. And that, and that's really it. So I could add um, same notification. Yeah. The same thing about the uh, conservation okay. mission. So I just can whatever other boards. Yeah. yeah. Just st stepping back from this uh, uh, three or four steps, what we started with was a uh, suggestion uh, of this board that we make uh, make it more easy or more required that applicants for either subdivision or site plan bring in the public and they, they're responsible for bringing in the public at, um, at the sketch plan level, which is the, the, where, the, where real decisions can be made. Right. And we, dis we discovered that the ordinances had it already, <laughs> but it was a May, a May situation. The town had to do it. So all this is doing is to cleaning it up to make the make it formalized that the applicant makes these no notifications, and therefore the uh, public has the uh, uh, possibility and and the right to ask questions of the applicant at the first level that they come to the board, which is a sketch plan. So it okay. turns out we didn't have that much work to do. This is not it's not new material, but it's um. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's cleaned up to accomplish that that goal that we set about set up about a month ago. Right. So, is our next step, Bill? To do we have to vote on this and then pass it to the town council? I think what we, think what we want to do is uh, have uh, David uh, propose a final ordinance next time, and we can vote at that time at, at, to on, on the ordinance and also to to to, uh, to send it on to the town council. Because we have a couple of minor ch changes to this, which we want to we want to mm -hmm. bless at the next time. Now okay. the now, um, did you want to try and do a public hearing on it at the next meeting? I don't know if we could with Amy not being in, but if I modified the language, we could technically do a public hearing, get some more public input. But I assume we'll probably workshop this with the count all these three items with the council at a workshop. I, I would prefer to workshop them with the council because that okay. yeah yeah okay so I'll write I'll like I've done in the past I'll write a memo saying here's what we're looking at doing and we're uh, the board is recommending a uh, the matter be workshop are, right. are we required to workshop it no but no. Uh, it, it, is is there it, something I, so controversial about this because I to me this is like a great yeah. step forward and you know I, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, fewer uh, meetings is better in life, if you ask me. But that's just me. So right. I agree with you. Um, <laughs> the the um, yeah. So the one thing we can do is is suggest that we workshop it. I don't think there's anything on here that's that controversial. But I was also going to run these two that we've just dis uh, been discussing in front of the the uh, town attorney because I think they're they're not substantive changes necessarily so i'm going to let him make that determination okay, and if not if not we could do a public hearing at the next meeting 
Yeah. And if we if we don't need to send it to council and yeah, just okay. let's, let's, let's do that. Let, let, okay. Let's uh, if you can make final drafts for next time, have a conversation with uh, uh, Phil yeah. Saucier, and then we'll we can make a decision next time what to do with them. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. There's no point in over over baking them. <laughs> okay. Is there consensus of the board to move forward with these things? I don't think we need a vote, but if everybody's nodding yes, yes we're going. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. I, I okay. okay. Great. Um, is the other applicant here? Because this is a good breaking point. I'm going to shop stare, shop, stop sharing now. And then we could come back to the uh, 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 waiver business. Yes. It is, I don't know if the applicant's here. Do you want to hit is, that waiver? Uh, uh, sorry. I... Yep, I am here. Okay. Do you want to move on to that next? Let's do that and we'll come back to the ordinance, not to waste Eric's time. We've already wasted enough okay. of Eric's time. <laughs> I think I wasted my own time. <laughs> well, no, I, it's Eric, uh, we apologize. Uh, uh, the administrator of uh, the office on this, it was out tonight. We didn't close the loop on office versus no office. And the, the, under normal conditions, the, the town office would have been open and you would have been broadcast from that location. So, yep. so well, you, uh, I, I did go in and there were a bunch of ladies in there having a meeting. They were very startled to see me. Okay. Well. I don't know what they were meeting for. But. <laughs> well, oh, well. We, apologize, we apologize for your round trip uh, to, to South Berwick, but there you are. So. Well, it's a scenic ride up Route 236, you know? <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, this, you, uh, I just laid the groundwork for the board and the public. Uh, you sent us a letter with some attachments uh, last week. Uh, you requested a consultation. You haven't made application yet. Uh, so this is all uh, talk. Yep. Uh, and um, if you make application, there'll be a bunch of stuff you have to do. So. Uh, um, if you have questions of us, you want to talk in general about a project, then have at, please. Well, uh, could you guys let me share my screen? Uh, or can I, I just go, go ahead? Try it. Try it. See the work. All right. Yeah, the work. All right. Good. Um, well, for the record, I'm Eric Sari from Alts Engineering. I'm here on behalf of the potential future applicant, Dozal. Uh, I don't think any of those gentlemen are here on Zoom tonight. Um, they're probably driving around South Berwick. Um, but uh, we've got a parcel on Witch Trot Road. Um, this is a, it's a 73 acre parcel, uh, wooded. It does have a few little structures on there and a couple of woods roads. Uh, and it was proposed for subdivision many, many years ago. Um, but something happened back then and it did fall through. Um, so the project has come back to life and what we're envisioning are two different versions of an 18 lot subdivision. Either the one you see in front of you on the screen, which is a conventional subdivision, uh, which has got road access to two points on which trot, two cul-de-sacs off it, and obviously the loop that goes all the way around with uh, the lots accessed off the road. And the second one, I'm doing this right, there we go, is a cluster or conservation subdivision. Still 18 lots, but it reduces the road length by about 50% and puts about 80% of the lot into conservation as open space. So obviously there'd be a lot less environmental impact on that. Um, so I'm here just to discuss this very broadly with you guys to take your temperature on us. If you guys have any comments, condemnations, um, questions uh, before we go into hard design. Um, one of the issues with the, uh, the conservation subdivision up here on the screen is the 600 foot long cul-de-sac limit that you guys have in town. The 600 foot limit is right here. So in order to access the back, we would need relief on that. Uh, right now, we've got about 2,700 feet of road in this configuration. Um, if we went with the other one, the conventional, obviously, we don't need relief on the, the cul-de-sac because we are accessing witch trot in both locations. I am of a mind that even though, you know, it's great to have big lots in the land, I, I think that this layout really preserves a lot more land and is less invasive on, on every aspect of, of the natural environment here. Uh, has a little bit less in terms of wetland impacts, um, obviously puts land aside in conservation. So that, that's the angle that, that we're approaching here. Um, that's pretty much all I have at this point. I, I think this is more just a, a, a forum for you guys to comment and ask any questions and for me to get a little direction from you guys. Uh, do you have a preference uh, between the plans? And if so, and if we do go with the cluster, could there be some relief to the 600 foot call us equipment? So I think maybe we'll start with that. What do you guys think? Uh, oh, oh. Go ahead. Um, well, 
I, I think that some advice would be to be in touch with DEP right away. Absolutely. And not wait till the end. Yep. <laughs> um, I also think, um, sorry, I, I'm losing my words, but I mean, being, being able to prove that, um, you know, you won't be damaging, you know, certain wildlife or natural, you know, water places. I mean, that's, that's going to be huge. And I, I just, um, sorry, I'm just totally blanking, yeah. but I think that it, it would definitely be worth your, the time and effort to do the DEP first, because we have learned a lesson that it will take a very, 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 very long time. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it does. <laughs> if, yeah. if, uh, if, if we don't have a for sure thing that that will happen and we will, and we will require, a, I'm guessing, I mean, I would obviously ask Bill about this, but I, I would guess that we are going to require a full um, traditional plan before we'll consider even consider uh look at me i can't finish <laughs> the cluster <laughs> i think I mean, when the, uh, betsy if you're if i'm hearing you right you talk about dep but there's also the if and w review which is the specific yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that, that would be part of it uh we're over 15 lots so we'd have to go for site location anyway so all of those bases will be covered i guess what um, we're saying eric is that we we've had more than one project in the last couple of years get killed by that late in the game. So they went through you guys, they got approval waiting well, for their state permits. And... Approval, but they, 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 they took months and months and meetings yep. and meetings at our time. And uh, and then when they were headed towards the end, maybe they got creamed by IF and W. Okay, you just that, that, that is good advice. Yeah, uh, and, and, and uh, the, the, it wiped out lots all over the place. Okay, that's and good so, to know, yeah. Th this lot, if you if you uh, if you get an IF and W consultation early, maybe before you even bring a sketch plan to us, uh, that might be because you know you could have ideas here that just don't fly. Yep. So. Okay, and that makes sense. We're required to, or we're required to make sure that you can prove a traditional subdivision plan will work there before we can even consider a cluster. Yep. Well, that that would be. This plan here, which yeah. would be the yield plan, so it's the same number of lots. Um, well, yeah, yeah, but but the I F and W things uh, oh, yeah. would yeah. have to apply to this as well. So we have yeah. to be comfortable that those I, are feasible lots. I, I'd run it through both ways, I think, because I, I can run the, the data search on I F W with both plans. Um, this lot does have some vernal pools. I don't know if you guys can see that on the screen. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely some significant habitat out there. Which which is how, what, how, how are they designated on the, on the, on the screen? Are they the dark shaded ones? Uh, well, the white ones are in green and the dark shaded ones are uh, the, the vernal pools. The, the crosshatch ones are like this one up in here. That's a significant pool. So that has a 250 foot buffer to it, which we can encroach upon up to 25%. And then the, the regular old vernal pools, not significant vernal pools are the ones with just the diagonal hatching. Uh, and how, how, how have they been uh, characterized to date? Uh, I believe Joe Noel did the flagging and the uh, the, uh, the assessment on those, um, and I believe that the state is aware of the of all the pools here, especially the significant ones. So those will show up on IFW on the mapper. Yeah, and have there been the thing the thing that uh, has been troublesome for these other projects is is species endangered yep. species. Yeah, we have, we haven't gotten that far yet, so IF and W will definitely trigger that. I mean, I, I know we're going to get a hit on long-eared bat, northern long-eared bat. We yeah. hit that every single project in the state. Um, but well, I don't know about anything else. Well, there's there's uh, the turtles and uh, oh, yep. a couple other things uh, yeah. are, have been showing up, and they we we didn't we didn't want to spend all the time, and the applicant did not want to get the big surprise that they had towards the end after much much effort and a lot of money. So uh, yeah, I, no, I, the, I that's, that's that a good idea. Too. Yeah, that, that's a good, that's a good idea. So I think I'll start with IF and W and probably have a pre-consultation with DP 
after I get IFMW data just to see if this is even worth pursuing. Yeah, and 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 you know, I think ideally, if you could do that even before we we're dealing with Sketch, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, that's easy enough. Now, the other thing is that the go to the cluster idea there. Um, uh, the how how long would that road be to the long the far cul-de-sac? It's twenty seven hundred feet total. This is about five hundred, so you're looking at twenty two hundred to the throat here. Okay, twenty two is a lot. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that that's a that's a that's a big. It is. The problem is the shape of the lot, where you've got this long narrow bit here to get back into the big piece, which is why a loop road makes sense. But you have a greater environmental impact doing that. Oh okay, yeah, you got a lot more road for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have a a, a, a locus location? I, I know where this is, but I'm not sure everybody else does. Uh, not on the plan. No, I don't. Could you pull up Google Earth and we could find it? Uh, let's let's try let's that. Let's see here. Uh, can you guys see that? No. Is there just an, is there a witch trot road number or address? I know there's a tax. There's no address because there's no house. Yeah. That's I, the problem. Is it between two other addresses? Well, but if you pull 61 up, you just and do 65, uh, 60, something like that. It's right in, right around 65. Just go to, go to any, any of those things. That yeah, we're, we're, I think we're right in here. Or maybe, I think it's this piece, actually. Uh, you, I still got the other, uh, yeah, got the other screen up, Eric. Oh, let's stop sharing. Let's try it again. Yeah. You guys got that? There we go. Okay. So okay. town, town's over here. We got Cox Pond here. This is Witch Trot Road through here. So that, go to that. That's the intersection off two thirty six. That's a yeah, uh, right here. No, yeah, and that's where they're uh, yeah, where they're talking about. Um, that's the, the ninety one intersection. Okay, yeah. And yep. Then and then you hang you hang a left and go north on Witch Trot Road. Okay, yep. got it. So Witch Trot going up here, and then it's off on the left. I th I think I think it's this piece in here. Hmm. Yeah, it is. You, it's been timbered, you can see, and the, the lot shape has got this angle in it. So yeah, the, you can see what's on the site now. It's just a couple of trailers. Somebody's got a boat, um, just a couple of woods roads, but okay, there, is so no, there is no house. It, so it's to the north of Witch Trot Road on yep. the left side going out. Okay, yep. that's at, after the top of the hill, right? I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah once, you're going downhill yeah. in this area. Yep. Okay, that's helpful. So it abuts the prop, the power lines. I think there's a piece in the way, actually, but yeah, it's right up next to them. I don't think it actually touches them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. That, that that's helpful to me. <clears throat> Eric, can I ask, a, or is the board done asking some questions, or go, go ahead, David? Okay. I was some of the uh, things that. Uh, Eric, when I'm going over my review for the for the town, is um, I'll need I'll want to know complete street lengths, you know, and if you could break that down and impervious for both designs. Okay. And really, what I'm going to be wanting is on uh, basically on the traditional design, the entire loop road. I want to know the entire length of the loop and the connector piece connecting the loop to the main roadway. Uh, on the on the cluster development, just the the full lengths to the end of the right of way, uh, the proposed right of way. Um, the other thing that always helps is a narrative, giving me a breakdown or giving the board a breakdown of number of lots, acreage of lots, um, the intent of the project, just overall kinds of things. How are they going to be served? I assume you're looking at doing wells and septic out here. Yeah. Okay. Wells and septic. Um, I assume there's no hydrants anywhere out in the neck of the woods. So I don't think those. so. I don't think so. Um, and maybe a, a little bit more information if you blow up your um, site location plan mm -hmm. to a really big size, that'd be help uh, helpful. Um, we may look at some traffic counts in the area. Uh, and I uh, will be looking for site distance is always a big yeah. one. I think you've got a fair amount in that location. <laughs> um, you talked about a prior case that went forward, maybe just a quick summary of what that happened. They proposed a case. 
they withdrew it. It got denied. Whatever. I don't know what the issues may have been. Yeah, I, I, and, and I've it, only seen the plan on that. I don't know the history. All I know is it obviously never got built. So I don't know okay. the why, it, why it dissolved. That's you know, the least. That's the least important. But yeah. it never it, went to planning board. Okay, I wasn't. You know, if there was suddenly uh, some contaminated, they, they dragged their feet and didn't do anything, and then finally the the market tanked, and they just withdrew, and that was it. Okay, and it was okay. supposed to encompass this lot and another lot to yeah. the north. Yeah, yeah. The, the road went all the way through. Correct. Yeah. About, about all when the way to that, Double J Lane. About when was that proposal made? <laughs> Jeez, that was probably. 2008, probably, right yeah. in that area. It, you say it never got to the planning board, Joe? It, they brought conceptual plans in and stuff like that, and then it just died. Yeah. You know, I've been on the had planning to, board since 2008, and I never saw it. So Yeah, it, so it, was, it was before that then. Okay. Yeah, I just... It's been a while. I just CDL want to make did, sure if there, if there was any major thing for the reason that it never went forward, you know, there was suddenly some, you know archaeological site there or something i don't know i just want no, it, that I, wasn't it no i that wasn't it no obviously i meant why did it not move forward that was all yeah um, i think the, the logistics the logistics with the double j lane area is where it got bottlenecked okay because that was a private road and they wanted the world okay um the other thing is um a project, probably a project name, a subdivision name yep. uh, early on. And maybe you could talk to um, to Joe about a street names. We're not there yet, but uh, it's nice for us to be able to track it by a street name or something like that. You could talk to Joe or, or however that is, but sometimes we get a proposed name when it comes in. And I, we've had cases changed names literally three times and trying to find all the documents associated with the review has been challenging once or twice. Yeah. So that's it all. It should be the, the project name would be better because road yeah. names change. Yeah, well, I meant, the, the, yeah, the, project name. The, the yeah. map and lot number should be on everything anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, did you have any questions of Eric at this time? Um, no, no, I just, um, yeah, no, I don't have anything. At this point, especially now knowing it's the other side of the road from Cox Pond and uh, waterways seem to, there doesn't seem to be any real tributaries or whatnot from what I can tell. So that was what I was looking at that, was, that we'd be concerned with. Hershey, I think we hit on uh, uh, Betsy Hood on, on your issue with IFNW early on, which we all agree on. We had that, uh, I mean, we, we spent better part of a year on a project that should have been killed at the outset with IF and W. Yep. Oh. It was it was a year. I think we missed it by two weeks. It started in September. We just sort of wrapped it up when we wrapped it up. So September 2020. IF and W, if they'd known what they needed to know at the beginning with IF and W, we could have saved a lot of heartache. Mm -hmm. I think I, um, the only one of, I was just out there uh, last week um, that's a, a little windy road and, and whatnot. I know we've talked about it before. Not sure how much you would take into account, Eric, just, but one of the things I tend to think of is the amount of the uh, traffic and, um, and, um, safety with yeah. cars entering, which try, I, mean, I don't know how much you can handle with that, but it's just one of those things that pop in my mind. I want to bring up. That's all. Yeah, we, we'd have to check the site distance to make sure it works at, at any driveway location. Is there any source of ADT on that road, do you know? No idea. Yeah. I haven't gotten that far. This, this is, I'm at the stage where I just drew a concept, and this is where oh, we're at. I <laughs> Got it. No, I think you, you, could, you could tell we're all bitten on the last issue that we had. So yeah, trying yeah. to, try to send everyone time and money. Well, we, we don't want to waste your, your time or your money or mine. So, okay. so uh, we need to, we suggest you think about these comments. And uh, uh, if you come back with an application for a, a, a subdivision and an alternative cluster, it, it should include the things that we're talking about, even at yep. the schedule level. 
So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and also if you could, uh, sorry, any uh, tree lines that exist currently and where they exist and where they're going to, where you're proposing to eliminate uh, vegetation areas, uh, you know, tree coverage and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, pretty okay. much the whole site, except for a little area in here is wooded. So I, I think right. what we do is just draw a limit of disturbance. I mean, on the house lots itself, it'd probably be a guesstimate. Uh, okay. But I can yeah. definitely nail the road down in the stormwater and, and let you know what would come out for that. Okay, okay. And again, these are single family homes, correct? Yes, they are. Uh, they're, and they're on on site water and sewer. Obviously, there's nothing, no water or sewer up there. Yep, right? yep. Yeah, that's an, that's another thing we're going to need to do test pits uh, to to prove out uh, septic systems. So these but are all. What, what's the what's the typical small lot size there? Is that uh, well, the, the minimum in a cluster is twenty thousand, but I think the smallest one is a hair under twenty four. Yeah, mm -hmm. lot four is twenty three eight sixty six. Yeah, got it. And then the biggest one, I think, we got a forty one thousand right over here. Yeah. Okay. So they're not micro lots, but they're not estate lots either, yeah. which is kind of the idea. Okay. Well, sorry for your road trip up to South Berwick and back, but uh, <laughs> we, got, we, got, we caught up with you. Sorry for the confusion. Yeah, all right, guys. Well, I, I got all dressed up for nothing. <laughs> hey, uh, and Eric, if if you want to contact me directly, there's a case that came before the board in the last six months or so that did a really nice job of putting to get, uh, together a subdivision with all of the endangered species and wetlands and you name it. And it, it made the review go 10 times faster, easy. Okay. <laughs> so if you want it, uh, anybody remember the name of that one? Let me see. Off of Mountain Road? Parent? Yeah, what did we call it? That was Mountain Road East and West or something like that. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I've I've got it, but if you um, my contact information should be on the town's website, yep. and if not, you can uh, Amy or Joe know how to get hold of me. Okay. All right. Oh, actually, I could email you. I'll email oh, you instead. Even better. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you guys too. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, sure enough. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. Yeah. Pretty. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure looking at subdivision plans, like, like I was re-traumatized, <laughs> <laughs> and I just couldn't get the words out. <laughs> there you go. That's good. Oh my goodness. Exactly. Don't, if you get, uh, make a joke now, we get traumatized. You look at the the, the uh, Zoom screen. Uh, I think Joe's playing Halloween, kind of leering behind a black curtain there today. <laughs> anyway, all right, so let's get back to uh, uh, the ordinance review. And uh, so we got those two mm -hmm. notification things understood, and we're doing that. And then we also noticed that we had a, a perennial problem with the assignment to the Zoning Board of Appeals for variances of road standards, not waivers by the, the planning board, and which it used to be years ago. And so uh, David's gone through the ordinance and has a memo to go through on that. Yep. And I'm going to again try and let's see if I can share my screen. All right. And Okay, can you see it says street specifications? Oh. Okay. Um, okay, so as Bill gave an overview, we we're looking to clean up some of this language. Um, there's a couple of items in here when I went through that are really, uh, they spelled cul-de-sacs with an extra S. So <laughs> this is a cul-de-sac. So I, I made all those changes and I'm tracking them as a, you know, change it all at the same time housekeeping kind of things. Um, the main item here is under the design standards, item N. If you remember the language that was in there gave the authority to waive street design standards to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the other, they, what the issues are, one, they called it uh, a, a zoning variance. Two, they gave it to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, who doesn't review any other design aspect of either site plan or subdivision review for that matter. 
and um, they're using wrong terminology and the like. So there was a number of things. So I have two documents that we can look at today. The first one is the actual text amendment that I put in here. I added some language, and this is this is really this first sentence that I'm pointing at here that I added. Yep. Um, there was the talk of, about undue hardship. Undue hardship <laughs> is a standard. Uh, undue hardship is a standard that is from granting variances, and they're not looking for a hardship standards. Um, and I can talk about that, and I talk about that in my memo that I've already drafted for the town council once you guys amend that. So we'll hit that next. But I took out the hardship standards, but um, the issue with the undue hardship is there was no other specifications in the ordinance about why the board would even want to consider. Um, first of all, I, uh, it's the ordinance is written so the authority would be transferred from the Zoning Board of Appeals and put it back where it was originally and uh, with the authority being the planning board. I mean, who better to, uh, we've talked about the reasons why, so we can get into that later, but, um, and then I also added some language in here. So uh, let's start here. With the required standard is clearly illogical or impractical, um, I added, and upon showing that the proposed roadway design will result in a superior overall project design, and I took up all those hardship standards. And then the planning board may grant a waiver from the standards. And I then I added appeals to the planning board waiver determination shall be taken to superior court. Again, that's where it belongs. The zoning board should not be there to for 150 bucks challenge the planning board's authority on every single thing. So but that is with, 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 without without that, the, the appeal is to the zoning board. Yep. I, I, yeah, we don't even need to have that in there. Uh, I just wanted to spell it out because it seems like the zoning board is, if we don't agree with the planning board, we automatically do that. The, 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 if a, the, the planning board denies an application or someone has a problem because you say, yeah, I'm going to approve, the planning board says we're going to approve this, but we're not going to grant, for example, the roadway length waiver. That could kill a project. If and when a project, uh, if an applicant, whether it be in a butter or the um, the applicant uh, is denied, they ought to take that challenge to the uh, to the uh, uh, it's right in front of me. I'm trying to read it. Superior Court. Well, uh, well, let, let, let's let's put that in yellow for now. Let's think about I, that. And that may be something that I, it's another question that I've got to ask the town uh, well, the town also, attorney. Also, uh, uh, it's a, it's a, you know we got we got the, the entire zoning ordinance 140 allows for decisions of the planning board to be appealed to the ZBA based on facts and so forth or procedures. So to take mm -hmm. this out of that would be controversial, and I haven't thought it out myself. Yeah. Um, uh, we, uh, we had that one case on the, on the Bennett lot business where they, they, they appealed it, but like I said, from my experience in 13 years, that's the first time I ever saw that. So I, I, right. I haven't seen anybody do that except for that one time. So, right. But there's talk to Phil, and also we'll want to think about the policy of that. Mm -hmm. I think the, the language you have about the circumstances is, is excellent. Okay, thank you. But, um, I, is there any okay go ahead George. well i just i um currently our standards are it's a 600 foot roadway is allowed is that right mm -hmm. yep. but we we it seems have always waived it in all the projects i've been on so far because it doesn't really allow you to develop to the full extent zone the rest of the ordinance allows is that is that fair to say uh in, in certain cases yes so what I don't really understand is why is it 600 feet? Was that a fire department requirement or was there some, did we want to basically ensure that people didn't do huge developments? And so we limited the amount of roadway only to waive it all the time. I mean, I don't really understand what the 600 feet was supposed to accomplish to begin with. I, I think it was a, the, just the dead end design kind of thing. No, no, that, and, Hershey's question's right on. 
it, uh, uh, it, it, right. it and, and if we're just going to constantly wave it, then maybe we should rethink 600 feet. Right. Do you I know what I mean? My, my understanding was it, it started out as a, a fire department thing, but fire departments are usually good with 1,200 feet or 1,500 feet even. Mm -hmm. Correct. They, the uh, thing was back in the day, they, they said 600 feet and stuff like that. And then they, they never wanted to change it. The it, thing it, is we keep, we keep plenty of hose on the trucks. We keep plenty of water on the trucks. So we don't Joe, have can issues. I, can as I, long Joe, as the road is built to a standard, there should be no issue how long it is because and as long as you have turnarounds, it should be fine because so, it's built to a standard. So, so Joe, are you saying the 600 feet came from the fire department originally? Negative, no, it didn't. It that didn't. was it, back, maybe back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And then when they did zoning, maybe, maybe that was something they thought about. And but actually, today, to, not well, even close. Hershey, I could tell you that the town council 10 years ago, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this was kept as a growth control, yeah. Pla yeah. plain and simple. Okay, so if, if, if that was the intent, to me it means every time we have, a, a, whether it's a subject like the, 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 the plans we just looked at, right? If we, if we decided not to waive the 600 foot requirement, their project is impractical. And it, it's sort of in conflict with what we allow for zoning in general, in terms of the number of lots they're allowed to have, in terms of the size of their whole yeah. and it, it, property. It, 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 it goes in direct conflict with the cluster concept because cluster mm -hmm. concepts almost always end up with a shorter dead end road and much less total road to, to leave uh, land undeveloped. Okay, and well, so that would seem like that would be the, because that's not actually associated with just, this is just the, the, the item where we, that we were talking about today it was just talking about the, the waiver authority and things like that. In the, in the street standards, it, it sounds like perhaps the board wants to also look at that language again. We, and we that, well, what happened? I'll, I'll, I, I, I'm acting as the as the uh, history guy here. Please, we, we please act that. as the history we guy. To, to all the road standards and did a wholesale uh, modification into what they are now. I don't know, eight, 10 years ago. And it, it all made sense. And the town council at that time had a growth control mindset. Some of them did. And so they took the waivers away from the planning board and gave them to the zoning board, which was illogical. <laughs> Just to make it more difficult. Exactly. So, so we, we've changed the road standards, we fixed the road standards, and they took the waiver away from us. Okay. But even if we got the waiver back, it would still be 600 feet, which is... Mm -hmm it seems impractical. Right. And not only that, it, it would, it, in my eyes, it would constitute basically a taking because you wouldn't, <laughs> no one could develop the lots they're allowed to have in the zoning ordinance with a 600 foot road. Well, well or, they have to, or they have to the loop roads, so. Right, I, like, the, like the one we talked about. But the, well, the, so if we're talking about roadway designs, um, that, I think we should we should bring that up in a. Uh, we, I mean, I can change that, but I, this was just for the. Uh, this is just for the. I, I the, think the that, waiver. The waiver. Fine. Thing, I, so. I'm fine with with bringing the waiver back to where it belongs, but then I think we should continue having yeah, this discussion I, I, I about the road. It's, it's a separate discussion. Yeah, I do. I do too. So should we put that as maybe a discussion item? The the roadway length issue uh, for one of our next meetings. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. And. Uh, I, the the whole moving something to a variance from a zoning board of appeals whose the, the 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 enabling legislation for the zoning board has nothing to do with waivers it's variances of zoning it, it was, was mm -hmm. just weird and it didn't right. work at all so all right. so that being said is there language in the actual uh, uh the the language that i pro provided is there any changes that the board wants to have we maybe i'm going to talk to phil about the policy decision yep and and show him this kind of thing but the actual verbiage doesn't change a whole lot no, trying I, to I, I trying think... to explain the verbiage is is the 
the the trick here, I think. No, I, it, I think from my eyes, it looks perfect. Okay. Okay, so I will, can we, uh, this, uh, can I get a consensus from the board? Go for it. All right, so yeah, let's, let's save up. that. Now the last, uh, in association with this, the last item that we had was, give me one second, through, here we are. I also included, um, hold on, this document should pop up. There we go. Can you see this memorandum? Yep. This is probably where you would, this is only talking about the waiver, moving the, the waiver state, I mean the variant standards to a waiver standards and moving the authority from the zoning board to the planning board. That's all this memo is covering. And I thought that you guys would want, so the memo that I wrote, I wrote it to you, I sent it to you. My, the way I wrote this was that the next time you would see it would not be from me, it would be from the planning board to the town council. Do it. This had, yes, that, that's fine. That was fine. Did, was there was there any changes that you guys wanted in in, in that document? I, I, I thought this was well written. I liked it. I didn't have a, yes. I, often, I often have edits. I didn't have any on this one. <laughs> all right. All right. That is all I had to. I'm going to stop sharing before I get some more work here. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Thank you, David. Good work. Thanks. Move, all, move all this ahead. So, okay. All right. So, uh, uh, we got no other business. Uh, member comments. Anybody have member comment? I always do, but I'll wait. So, um, uh, I've been contacted by uh, a potential applicant to the planning board, um, who I think is uh, got um, um, uh, a lot to offer, and. Um, the he has a standing conflict on many first and third Wednesdays. And his question was, if would the board and would our bylaws allow if he was uh, appointed to the planning board, allow to go to the second and fourth to uh, Wednesdays, we just flop it over for the second, fourth, rather than the first and third. And um, um, I said, I'd, I'd run it by the board. And if I think if we choose to do that, uh, we can do it by bylaws, and, and it's, it's no big deal. Would anybody have a, 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 a other other conflicts in their lives if it was shifted to the second? This this is only in the event that he applies, he gets appointed, and then requests that we move the thing over. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, I, I I I hate to be wishy washy, but I need to check my schedule a little more carefully because I have some standing meetings on Wednesdays, but maybe I can move those. So mm -hmm. okay. Uh, could you uh, I just communicate with me on that Hershey yeah. and I'll take yeah. it from there. I, I have meetings for other municipalities sometimes uh, on a Tuesday night but for right now I'm wrapping up the work in those towns and uh, so if I we're not going Tuesdays we're just we're going from the first I mean excuse me the the, okay. the Wednesdays instead of two but I, that should be fine by me as long as we're doing remote meetings that's fine okay okay and you guys are the important ones so I'll work around you I, I, I have no idea what this gentleman's going to uh, agree to do, but uh, I told him I, I would uh, run it by the board. So, okay. And I, I'll put out the call for planning board nominees <laughs> anyway. We still need, if he becomes on, we need two or three more. So, and I see, I see people showing up by uh, virtual and having interest in the, in the process. And that's great. Uh, so I guess I'll put it again, be, I'm, if you're interested in, Participate even as an alternate, that'd be great too. All right. I don't think we have Manly tonight, unfortunately. So I'll look for a, a motion to adjourn from somebody else. Someone, someone I, I motion we adjourn so I can go back to the ball game. Okay. I can get a okay. second. <laughs> second. I'll second. Okay, Thank second, you. Betsy. All right, we're good. See you guys. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.